I'm Jay from jaysgulp.com and I'm Scott from scottskills.com and he has his new toy to show and talk to you about. A Lian Li PCQ11 desktop computer. It's a mini ITX case so it takes a very small motherboard uh, but uh, it uses standard equipment otherwise. It uses a standard power supply, a standard DVD uh, ROM or Blu-ray drive and a uh, other standard features like 2.5 inch drives, 3.5 inch drives, it'll take two, two and a half, and two, three and a half inch drives built into the case. That's the back will be. The back, it's all modular, so each piece comes out, you'll mount your power supply to this tray here and slide it in. And, uh, and I'll fix it to the case with these screws here. You have two expansion bays for uh, PCIe or PCI peripherals. And uh, below it here, this empty space is actually where the hard drives sit inside of the case. Motherboard goes here and you've got some ventilation along the top back of the case for air to escape. That's right along the sides as well. And uh, inside you got a very large fan if you can see that from there. You can see that the fan is quite large inside of the case. So airflow is very good on an aluminum case like this. Uh, entirely made of aluminum and the side panels come off of this case with the screws on the outside of it. So you can mount the motherboard on this tray and then put the entire motherboard back in the case rather than having to fool around inside of the case. That's a small very nice feature. Yes. That's, that's J-proof. Yes. You'll want to be careful and use uh, the right side screwdriver so you don't mar up the screws if you want to keep them good looking. Or maybe put a piece of tape on them. We'll put that aside here. So we'll that's, show. that's what's going to go into it. We'll show what's going to go into it. Uh, right now we're looking at a mini uh, ITX Intel motherboard and the reason why we went with the mini Intel uh, mini ITX and the Intel motherboard specifically is because of the gigabit Ethernet port on it. A lot of people don't think about what kind of network connection they're using. Sometimes they're using a wireless connection so it doesn't really matter. But in this case we definitely want file transfer capability we definitely want gigabit and we want a gigabit Ethernet port that we can trust and that is why Intel is the direction that we're going here. So you can buy a Zotac or Asus or other motherboards um, that have overclocking capabilities that you can put as much as a Core i7 2600K in and get tremendous speed out of it. But in this case, this is primarily a development machine where we're using to develop websites like Sky Steels and Jay's Golf with. So this motherboard and a uh, Intel Core i3 2120 should be sufficient. Okay, and then you got these two guys. That's right. Now we're using Corsair Force GTs. It's important uh, to note that these Force GTs are actually synchronous SSDs as opposed to asynchronous SSDs. The cheaper SSDs are generally asynchronous SSDs. They have anywhere from 25 to 40 percent slower write times to their synchronous counterparts. So they're not really the ideal primary SSD for your computer. They would be good for a secondary SSD or for an old SATA 2 computer, but this motherboard is specifically uh, be, you, you being used because of a SATA 3 and RAID technology so that we can use two of these drives in a stripe situation, RAID 0, and to try to get uh, this 555 megabytes times 2 over a gigabyte per second of transfer. That's the goal. And we'll be happy with, we'll be happy with 500 <laughs> compared to the existing mother, uh, hard drives that are in there in the old computer. She's going to be fast. And we got a power supply. And basically this is the largest piece of equipment that you got going into this. That's right. Uh, the silencer MK3 here has a 400 watt modular power supply. And the reason why we went with a modular power supply is so that we can run all of the cabling inside of the machine before sliding the power supply in as a whole. And we can also reduce the amount of excess wire that's in the machine because a lot of power supplies will have enough connections for six uh, hard drives maybe, two media drives, and some other headers that we won't need in this computer. So rather than uh, fill it up with a bunch of excess cables, we'll just leave out the cables that we don't need. Save a bit of room inside and it'll just improve the overall cooling yes. of the machine. Heat sink is important. Right. Now, uh, the combination of the Lee and Lee here and this Intel desktop uh, motherboard, we're actually going to uh, be using this motherboard in a different scenario here in the future so that we can add 
uh, an Intel board. We can get one in the ITX format that supports the Core i7. But uh, for now, well, we can take apart some of these things and see what's inside. We're just going to show you what they look like. Just kind of open them up. I'm not going to try to do this. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. Um, basically, it's an unboxing of um, what an SSD drive uh, looks like um, as compared to the standard um, hard disk drive. So what we have here, uh, it's quite simple actually. We have just the SSD itself, which is no more than the a, a, a memory chip in the shape of a two and a half inch hard drive shape of a notebook hard drive. Yeah. So uh, you can actually put these on a much smaller surface but they make them this way so that they fit in a standard computer and you've got a, an adapter here so that you can put this drive in a three and a half inch slot. Bay. Right. Okay. Now this will take up an entire three and a half inch bay. We do have adapters that allow you to put two in a single bay. Yeah, okay. But in the case of what it comes with standard you just get the Drive itself. drive itself as well as the adapter here. Now, you don't get a SATA cable, so you'll need to get one of those. And you'll need to make sure it's SATA 3, because that's what this is. And the reason why you get the kind of performance that you get out of this, the 555 megabytes per second, is because it's SATA 3. Remember that SATA 2 caps out at roughly 380 megabytes per second. So you'll see that SATA 3 right there. So make sure that you get the right connection cables. I'm getting reflection, there you go. Uh, make sure you get the right connection cables for your SSD. Uh, these are the, the, uh, the motherboard and the chipset uh, that Scott will be putting into this little monster. So That's right. Now, uh, the combination of these two is about 250. We got the board for about 119 and the chip for 130. So combination of the two, about, about 250 overall. Uh, one seal on that and uh, basically we're looking at your standard motherboard box. We've got the motherboard itself here inside of a static uh, shielded package and <clears throat> the parts uh, beneath. Now looks like we get two SATA cables, and um, they are not labeled SATA 3 that I can tell, so I'm not sure what kind of SATA cables they are, but there are two, uh, they appear to be about 12 inch cables. And we've got our shield for the back of the computer, of the motherboard there, and some documentation, and a CD-ROM. Pretty standard stuff. And if you're into stickers, you can put this inside of your case, but I don't think I'll be doing that. I like stickers. <laughs> What's all this in here? Oh, look, it's a quick reference. Ah, <laughs> in many languages. Of course. Oh, it's a poster. Yeah, how convenient. Thanks. Okay, so. <laughs> When you're done, you can put this on your wall, show your friends. What is this for? I'm going to say I've got a quite the documentation here. Uh, I guess it's, uh, I mean, I'm not an uber geek, so I'm not, I don't, I've never seen anything like this before. This is pretty run of the mill. This just tells you where to put what, and um, it's all. Very nice and colorful. Uh, paint by numbers, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10, 11, 12. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I just sounded like I was an auctioneer there. But let's go on to this little guy. Ah, yes. That is the processor that we're putting in this machine. Now, this is a retail box uh, Core 3 processor. So make sure when you do your buy your processor that you're buying a retail box. If you don't have a cooling fan or a heat sink of some type that you're going to put on it. We tend to buy the retail boxes just to get the stock heat sink. If we're not going to do overclocking, there really isn't much need for a custom cooling solution and you know you're going to be getting a warranty coverage with a standard OEM fan. So we've got a special Intel seal on this sticker so we know that it's 
genuine yep. Intel. Yep, you got to watch out for counterfeit. But we can actually see uh, the processor itself up there. So it's, we can verify that it's the correct processor before even opening the package. Perhaps we should have done that, but it is a 4 i 3 2120. And there you have it. Most of the box is the heatsink. Yeah. That's a. There's some. Documentation and and uh, yes, your heatsink and processor in this box here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's the top of the fan. And then there's your tip. And uh, hopefully it includes some thermal grease for us. Or something. Huh. Perhaps it's just on the. Yeah. This some compound that's already on the bottom of it, so then you put it on top of the processor. It'll make the right connection, then you all set. So it'll kind of sit in your computer like that. Not much to look at, but... No, nope. but when it's all put together and said and done, you got yourself a good mutt. Do you want to call it a mutt? Put it together yourself? That's really all that an HP or a Dell is, anyway. Yeah. It's about the board. Actually, this is, uh, you might consider this an Intel computer being the motherboard and the processor Intel and the network card. I mean the only thing that's not and the hard drives and Corsair. Yeah. And um, the PNY memory. Yes, that's right. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed that series of unboxings and uh, I guess brief demo slash discussion. Um, uh, so if you did like it Please subscribe for more and give us a little thumbs up because you know you like us. I think I'm just here for moral support at this point. Um, well, this is a power supply. <laughs> yes, power. Um, this is the final component of uh, Scott's build. So we're just going to unbox this 400 watt silencer power supply, modular uh, power supply, see what we've got inside and what all it comes with. You get your standard power cord. Mm -hmm. Some wire ties. Alright. Yeah. You can tie it up inside. Little bags. That's nice. That's all the cables come in the bags. So, yeah. Look at all that. All your modular cables come in here so that when you don't need them, you have a place to store them. Look at that. They even say silencer. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Well. There's your instruction manual on the top there and some sort of styrofoam packaging and there's your silencer. Oh, and it's in a bag as well. So in case you need to take your power supply out and carry it with you somewhere. That's a really, I guess it's a shtick or something, but that's a really bizarre way to, unless they expect you to use this uh, bag to tote something other than the, Oh, there goes that hole. Okay. Well, there you have it. You've got your main power lines, so they're not going to be modular, but all of your accessory or peripheral connection is going to be. Yeah. Well, there'll be a, uh, a video or, or, or I guess maybe more of a uh, picture slash description of your build. Um, yeah, we'll do some pictures, a pic picture tutorial about how we go through and build it. So and I'll get to Leon later. Scottsteels.com. Yeah, we'll put it on scottsteels.com. And uh, yeah. right. okay, well that concludes all the parts that we have for our build. We'll let you know how uh, the build goes. And we'll do some picture, picture taking while we build it, and then we'll run some benchmarks against it, see how how well it performs, and we'll report back. Yes, that'll be the most important part.